in a world where graphics cards are so scarce that even an RX 560 costs a ton of cash, we managed to get an impressive pre-built computer on our workbench. And it's none other than the Dell Alienware Aurora R11, which hides an i7-10700F processor and a mighty RTX 3070 within its chassis. The focus of this video will be the solving of a problem related to the overheating and throttling. And for all you performance sluts out there, don't you worry, we will be looking at some benchmarks and numbers in a later video. Yay! Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel to show some love for what we do and make that pesky YouTube algorithm bless us with sweet promotion and shower us with subscribers. The beginning of our little story here was a tad tedious, as we had to completely disassemble a pre-built PC, take out the MOBO, and believe it or not, modify its bottom side in order to install the Noctua L9i. Now let's go and see what exactly was the problem and whether our little solution here actually worked. Briefing time! You're probably wondering why someone would buy a pre-built PC during this great shortage. Now. It doesn't take a nuclear scientist to come to a realization that a pre-built is the smart man's choice, as you could buy a machine like this one for 2000 bucks a few months back, while only the 3070 would cost you that much. It's no wonder a friend of the channel decided to order the Aurora R11, though these pre-built configurations do come with their own problems as the cheapskates who actually build them tend to either use incompatible parts or sell a frickin' gaming rig without actually testing it in actual games. The first problem came as soon as we turned the PC on, as the fans are noisy like a death metal concert, which means the components inside are running at a high temperature, so the cooling system is working overtime by raising the RPM. Now, this is no biggie when the PC is idle, but it goes bonkers as soon as you turn on a video game and pray to God that you don't burn down your apartment building if you turn on benchmark apps, such as Cinebench or Firmark. And also, rendering is a big no-no. The fan noise is really soothing if you like the sound of construction sites, and even using it for everyday tasks can be distracting. And not only that, CPU-Z showed a lot of throttling, and this nice little gimmick actually reduces CPU frequencies in order to keep the system active. Something smelled rotten here, and it wasn't the core components, but the stock cooler that came with the rig. As soon as we opened up the case, lo and behold, the appalling cooler was in sight. Here's my two cents. The guy who projected this monstrosity should find another job. It's clear as day that the 10700F produces quite a lot of heat, and the stock cooler is simply incapable of soothing this beast of a processor. Even if it were capable of cooling it, the makers of this PC were literally cutting corners, as you can barely put a needle inside, while the big chungus PSU completely smothers the cooler and prevents adequate airflow. The go-to solution for configurations such as this come in the form of all-in-one water cooling systems that get rid of all the hot air within the case. Now, to be fair, Dell did recognize this flaw and the Aurora R12 rigs that came afterwards do have water cooling. The time has come. Let's get cracking and try to reduce these ginormous temperatures and the wonderful throttling. A month back, Noctua sent us their L9i fan for testing, so it's only logical to pop it into this rig and see how well it holds. In order to open up this bad boy, we first had to remove the two safety locks from the backside and then unscrew and pull the small lever. And as you can see, the damn thing will fall apart on its own. While removing the sides of the case, the PSU should be pushed upwards and that's that. As the backplate cannot be accessed from the bottom side, we were forced to take the MOBO out. If you ever assemble your own PC, this should be no biggie for you, and even if it's your first time, it's pretty much a no-brainer to find a decent tutorial online. 
We had one of Noctua's fine coolers in one of our previous reviews, and this bad boy falls into the low profile cooler category due to its height of only 37 millimeters, which means it's well suited for an HTPC, pre-built rigs, and computers with smaller cases. The L9i comes in an elegant looking black box, which holds the cooler with NF-A9X14 fans, a low noise adapter, thermal paste, and the mounting screws. Add a 6 year warranty to the pile, and you got yourself a mighty fine bundle at a relatively affordable price. They must be either bonkers or too confident in their product to give such a lengthy warranty, but hey, we're not complaining here. Now. There is a pretty big flaw that comes with the L9i cooler, and it's not performance related at all. Brace yourselves, Noctua's pretty little cooler can only be attached to Intel CPUs. They truly pulled a fast one on all you AMD fanboys out there, and personally, I think this is not the best marketing choice, as many will choose a Ryzen CPU for their gaming rig. I know. There are plenty of coolers out there to choose from, but it's still a shame for such a good product. Let us get back to the mounting itself, as the NHL9i has a pretty simple mounting process. The Mobo did make us sweat a bit though, as the back plate seems to be a tad different from your average Intel motherboard. It's a good thing we had a first gen Intel board in the studio, which we plundered for its back plate, and voila, the NHL9i fit like a glove. Unscrewing the motherboard's safety locks was the last and final step. Then we placed the new backplate on the Mobo and rescrewed the locks, and the board was ready and waiting for the new fan. Easy, right? As mentioned, the cooler installation is not rocket science and can be done with just a screw and half a brain. Now it was just a matter of putting the components back together and presto, the job's done. It is worth mentioning that Noctua does not recommend installing an L9i cooler for the i7-10700F, or at least not without a decent case and tinkering with the BIOS settings. With the fan installed, the noise was drastically reduced, and the temperatures on the CPU decreased by around 10 degrees while under heavy load in Cinebench and Firmark, while HW Info shows no signs of throttling. Like we previously surmised, this is not the go-to solution for this case, and a water cooling system would be a better choice, but this little Noctua gets the job done. In gaming tests, the CPU temp didn't go over 75 degrees while the room was as quiet as a cemetery. If you manage to find the custom BIOS for this here beauty, you can mess around with the voltage and the frequencies, and this will reduce the temp by a few more degrees. The trashy part comes in the form of warranty loss for your PC, which is a huge bummer as the factory BIOS comes with very few setup options.
This concludes our review. Don't forget to support the channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and commenting below. Peace!